I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. You know the drill on a Monday, even on a Labor Day, a holiday. ESPN's Trevor Maddich is joining us for a loaded Maddich Monday because college football and BYU football, more importantly, are underway. Trevor, happy Monday. Hope you're enjoying your Labor Day after a full weekend of college football. How are you feeling after watching not just BYU, but getting your first taste of the real, real deal here in week number one of college football? What an exciting opening weekend. I mean, Colorado shocks the college football world with that win over TCU. Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming shocks the football world, college football world with that win over Texas Tech. I mean, it was it was an exciting opening. And BYU's defense was it running around, flying around, attacking. All that adds up to an exciting opening weekend. Okay, our primary question in what's trending in the previous block was a uh, bigger deal. Shut a shutout or 14 points by the offense? What do you think? I think they're equally a big deal for opposite reasons. I mean, the defense played like we haven't seen them play in a long time. I mean, whatever was going to happen, they were going to attack, and they did. It's not that they blitzed all the time, and they didn't. But when the running backs came towards them, they attacked downhill. They attacked the blockers, where in years past, we saw them sort of wait and catch the blocker and sort of – hug up the running back. No, no, they were attacking. Defensive backs attacked the receivers and attacked the football. You know, so I, th I thought that there was a, a great excitement on the defense, and I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I'm very worried about the offense because the offense was the opposite of attack. I don't mean just, you know, from play calling standpoint. I mean just the way they played, especially the offensive line. It was uh, really disappointing to see how softly the BYU offense played in this game. Trevor, the question is, how do you begin to change something like that, the mentality that goes into that, so that the offense does become more of an attacking mindset? Where do you begin to alter that? That's right. The offensive line, for the last several years, has had big, powerful, talented guys who basically sort of stand around. I mean, the offensive line the last couple of years, in my opinion, has been the biggest disappointment on this team, but they will continue to be until they're not. And you, you can see in this game a continuation of what's been happening where on a downhill running play, they'd take a step and they'd fit up with the defender they're supposed to block and they'll push them a little bit. And then, then the defender will kind of flow and they'll stop and they'll watch the play. Really? You know, I, watch Georgia. Georgia's offense line, there's one particular play in their opener this last uh, week where it was a bubble screen out to the left, but it was an RPO. So the offensive line was run blocking. And you saw the, the left tackle and the left guard just drive their men four or five yards downfield. And then the left guard didn't have anybody to block. So he turned around to see what was happening with the ball carrier, and he was being wrapped up by several defenders with others coming in. So instead of watching the play, he turned around and flew back towards his ball carrier and wiped out a guy that was coming in to add to the pile on top of him. Now, it was during the play before the whistle. It was a clean and legal hit, but it spoke to a mindset. When you fire up the ball, strike somebody. Let me see that guy worry about you as an offensive lineman because you're firing off the ball so hard at him. And then when you lose your block a little bit, Find someone else to block. Or when your guy starts to move, now's your opportunity to keep pushing him and pancake him, put him flat on his back. That's the mindset you have to have in the offensive line. And if the BYU offensive line were in a court of law charged with aggression, I don't think there'd be enough evidence to convict them. Frankly, I am really disappointed because they are too big and too powerful and too talented to stand around and watch plays and to fit up like a wide receiver blocking on a bubble screen instead of firing off and driving people as best they can. Trevor, I wish you would have an opinion on this program. Uh, five minutes <laughs> yeah. left in the third quarter, L.J. Martin comes in, and he gets six carries on that drive. He has 91 yards in essentially the last 20 minutes of this game. What did you see from L.J., and did something change on the offensive line? The offensive line did. You could see – that there was a point in the second half when they just started running the ball. Just run, 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 run. And I think it was just a matter of, hey, whether it was from the coaching staff, you guys got to take over, or whether it was from the line themselves, 
who you know talked to the play calling brain trust, Aaron Roderick, et cetera, and said, we need to take over. And I hope it was the latter because that's the mindset that they need in order to start to turn this around up front. So the blocking was better. The holes were bigger for LJ Martin than they were for the other guys in the first half. And Martin, for, for his part, he was terrific. I mean, he had good vision. He, he hit the holes hard. He ran hard, but he did have better holes to run through. So maybe that's a spark that we'll see. But again, it's not just a matter of for the offensive line, you know, fitting up with their guy and then kind of pushing them something. No, I want to see them fire in the guys. I want to see them drive them, and I want to see them drive them into the ground if they can, mm. every time before the whistle legally so there's no penalty. I want to see opponents fear facing the BYU offensive line and those big BYU running backs because it's been many years, several years at least, since any defensive front has feared playing this offensive line. As a matter of fact, they've liked it because they don't get a bruise, and often they don't break a sweat. So let's change that. Trevor Maddox bringing it on a Maddox Monday National Championship Center for the Cougars, a 1984 ESPN college football analyst. Keaton Slovis has taken a little bit of heat over the weekend because of the offensive woes. But when you look at the quarterback and how he played with play calling uh, considered and the offensive line here, which is, you know, under the microscope in this conversation as well, how much of this falls on Keaton Slovis's shoulders and what can he do to offer his spark for the offense? Well, he, he, he wasn't Keaton Slovis, and he'd be the first to tell you that. He missed some opportunities. Some of that was that his top two receivers were out and getting used to some of those younger guys in a game speed in terms of where they're going to be when he lets that ball fly. It takes a little bit of time because you can't really simulate a game in practice the way you really need to. It needs to be in a game to get that done. And so, you know, I, I don't worry about Keaton Slovis. I think he's going to be just fine. And as he gets to know his guys, he'll know what to do with them. I'd like to see them use them in a more creative way. You know, there was a, a third long, and they threw a bubble screen out left to Isaac Rex. Now, I love Isaac Rex, but he's 255 pounds. He's not that lightning quick guy who catches the bubble screen behind the line and then darts past the wide receiver's blocks and with speed beats the inside pursuit and so he can convert third and long with his legs. That's not Isaac Rex. You want to throw him the ball on third and long, get him downfield so he can do a jump ball. So things like that were kind of head scratchers for me. I don't know if that was, um, you know, game plan this essentially or intentionally. I don't know if, if Keaton Slovis kind of checked to certain things. I mean, these are things that I don't know. Uh, but I know there were some real head scratchers. And it was, it was um, I expected the receivers. And, and Isaac Rex, who had two catches, including that little bubble screen, uh, and Keaton Slovis to be more effective against this Sam Houston defense. And so the, the offensive line, I, 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 don't, I don't know what they're going to be this year. Keaton Slovis, I'm very confident, will get things together. And he's a great leader. He's an outstanding passer. He's shown to be very accurate when everything is running right. And I think Slovis will get this running right. They certainly have an opportunity against Southern Utah this Saturday, then at Arkansas and into Big 12 play. Defensively, a shutout, which is tremendous against anybody. Three takeaways, only 185 yards allowed. What was the biggest difference from last year to what we saw in game one defensively? In a word, fun. There's only one way for defenders to have fun, and that's to go hit somebody, to go dictate to the offense. Defenses hate being in a read and react mode. Where okay, the ball snapped, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see where the ball's going, and I'm gonna flow to the ball, and then when the ball gets to me, then I'm gonna try to make the tackle. No, 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 no. De defenses love to come downhill to attack, to shock the blocker, to swarm the ball carrier, and you saw that mindset in this game. And note, as you go back and look at the highlights, how often a, a play was made just to tackle. It wasn't like a massive interception or something like that. Just a, a tackle, and the defenders were fired up and jumping around and swarming each other and congratulating each other just having fun and on defense the only way to have fun is to attack and to dictate to the offense now there's things that need to improve for the BYU defense but I thought in the in the first time out with this Jay Hill scheme and Jay Hill mindset I I loved watching this BYU defense play now Trevor quickly what are some of those things that you feel like could be shored up and, and cleaned up on the defensive side after a, a performance where you shut out an opponent. Yeah, well, they got behind the line a lot. 
and they caused a lot of uh, havoc and trouble behind the line. They only had one sack, and that was Tyler Batty. And this was a, a day when Sam Houston threw 33 times, and they only managed the sack. Now, I'm not very good at math, but I think that's one out of 33 attempts. <laughs> so that's the ratio uh, for sacks. And so I, I think without blitzing, they still need to do a better job of of beating a pass protector and getting into the backfield and bringing the quarterback down. But I saw guys getting behind the line more in this game, and I think the sacks will come. Certainly it was an eventful week in the Big 12 as well. You mentioned, uh, you know, the big upset where Texas Tech gets beat. Baylor getting beat by Texas State. TCU at home loses to primetime and Dion in Colorado. Uh, what would you make of the Big 12 in week one? I thought the Big 12 was was interesting. You know, I, I am surprised about Texas Tech, although, as we all know, playing at 7,000 feet in Laramie, Wyoming, is, is a shock if you're not used to it. The coach for Texas State is the former coach at Incarnate Word, who's one of the most brilliant offensive minds in all of college football. This is his first year at Texas State. So that was kind of a, a, a trap game um, for the Big 12. I like it that all four newcomers won and looked good. Um, I like it that Oklahoma performed so well mm. now once again they didn't play a, a real tough opponent but what impressed me was not the offense putting up 10 million points what impressed me was that the defense was aggressive up front and the the corners on the edges did a great job covering man behind all that because that's what coach brett venables wants to have happen he wants his guys to cover down so he can be creative attacking up front last year they didn't do either very well in this first game against a lesser opponent, so far so good. So at the top of the Big 12, things are looking like we expect them to look. Trevor, can I just reemphasize how great it is to have you back every Monday and the college football is back? We're so lucky to have you and we appreciate the insight. It's great to have you on this program once again. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me back. And for anybody who's offended by my uh, disappointment with certain aspects of the BYU offense, I would just suggest this very gently. Get over it and fix it. <laughs> I love the passion. Trevor, great to talk to you. Thanks so much.